Round five of the Stanek Rally Championship saw competitors head north for the Stanek Great North Rally. Over the last couple of years, the event has been plagued by rain, but this time around there were clear skies over Northern Province as competitors and service crews paid attention to detail before the start in Petersburg. At the halfway mark of the season, factory VW Motorsport crew Jan Havoc and Doug Judd held a 14-point lead over Castrol Toyota Works crew Serge Damso and Guy Hodgson, who desperately needed a win. For the VW team, consolidation was the name of the game. Our strategy for this, year, for this event would be to try and extend our points lead and uh, you know, that will obviously make things a little bit easier further in the season. Uh, as far as this event is concerned, I see it's uh, very hot. So I think we, we're quite glad that we're number one on the road, just in case there might be a small dust problem. Uh, but um, you know, this event is, is tricky, it can change overnight to rainy conditions again. So you know, we'll play it by ear as it, as it comes and uh, we're quite positive uh, for a good result. Being drawn number one on the road gave Havoc and Judd an early psychological boost over the rest of the challenges. With the VW Motorsport Golf, the first car to be flagged away at the start. Well, they took part of the start ramp away with them there, and they were followed by championship challengers Serge Damso and Guy Hodgson in the Castrol Toyota Conquest, and then the Sassel Motorcraft, Ford Escort of Paolo Piazzamuzzo and Richard Lee. Opening shots on the Stanek Great North Rally were to be fired in two short special stages in Petersburg. Crews then headed for Machubeskluf and Zanin for the rest of the day one activities, which consisted of six more special stages. When matters got underway, the sun was beating down with a temperature in the low 30s. Despite the heat, the pace up front was expected to be unrelenting, with Havoc and Judd soon hard at work. 200 crossroads right. Crossroads right, 90 right, ignore the hairpin, 90 right. Then straight on, hairpin right, turn off hairpin right, around the arrow, around the arrow. For Castrol Toyota pair, Damso and Hodgson, an overdue win was a championship necessity. You know, a good event and bad event, but uh, one thing I'm going to say, the weather's going to be good, so... Uh, could be a very interesting rally, I think. Uh, you know, we haven't been rallying here for quite a while. It hasn't been wet. It's, every time it's been wet, so, and the roads are good. So I'm looking forward to it. Well, even the top crews are not averse to a little shortcut here and there, with Damso and Hodgson winning the first stage by two seconds from Haddock and Judd. Next up were Paolo Piazzamuzzo and veteran Richard Leake with the Sassol Motocraft Ford Escort, now fitted with a new differential, which the team hoped would see them close the gap on the two factory cars in the Premier Class A8. After a disappointing season, Piazzamuzzo and Leake had their sights set on a podium finish. The factory VW and Toyota entries have dominated Class A8 and throughout the season Piazza Muzo and Leek have invariably found themselves locked in battle with Quazuna Natal pair, Etienne Lawrence and Robert Paisley in the team total Toyota Conquest. The two crews posted identical times on the opening stage and there was a solid start from Class A7 leaders Chart van der Waals and Sidney Harding in the Reeks towing VW Golf with the pair strong favourites for another class win. Also favoured for a class win were reigning Class A6 champions Hergen Fekken and Dave Lukovic with the Pretoria pair out in the Dunair Toyota Corolla. Having only their second national outing in the Toyota Corolla, the talented Fekken and Lukovic started the event holding down top five positions in both the drivers and co-drivers championships and they were looking to consolidate. For Group N favourites, Hannes Krobler and Nick Hadden, there were tactical choices to be made. We can't go too slow. We need to, to stay in front of the Group N guys. And you know the problem is you say you're not going to chase the other guys, the modified guys, but once uh, the flag drops, you know, the things change, you know, and then you're like a horse, you know. Uh, but we're going to try and, and keep in front of the Group N guys, try and, and get uh, the most possible points on this event so that we can come nearer to the leaders in Group N and, and try and win the championship. En route to Zanin, crews took a little detour for a long 25-kilometre stage in the Mahubuskler forests. After the opening two special stages, VW Golf factory crew Havoc and Judd led Damso and Hodgson by just one second, with the expected battle between the top two crews in South Africa already in full swing. These are the sort of special stages in which the top crews revel, and after two tight special stages, Havoc and Judd relished the opportunity to let the VW Golf 4 off its leash. 
Special Stage 3 saw Castrol Toyota pair Damso and Hodgson drop eight seconds on Havoc and Judd and were now nine seconds in arrears. The big losers on Special Stage 3 were Sassel Ford Escort pair Paolo Piazzamuzo and Richard Leak. Piazzamuzo and Leak started the Special Stage just two seconds down on Etienne Lawrence and Robert Paisley, but then disaster struck when they hit a rock and picked up a puncture. The crew then took a gamble by deciding to continue rather than change the wheel. The Sassel Ford Escort later emerged from the special stage on three wheels and dropped nearly four minutes on the leaders and more than three minutes on Lawrence and Paisley in the team total Toyota Conquest, who took a tight grip on third place. The beauty and tranquil surroundings of the Mahubaskluf Dam provided crews with a little welcome respite. It's technical crew who do all the work at service points, but when Piazza Muzo and Leek arrived on the scene, they were left to mull over the wisdom of electing to soldier on in Special Stage 3, rather than change the wheel. Unfortunately, there was a rock left in the line from one of the other cars, and uh, we hit that, subsequently punctured the tyre. Uh, we threw a gamble whether to stop and change it or continue. If we stopped and changed it, it would have been about four and a half minutes, so uh, we decided to continue, but the last four kilometres was just disastrous. We lost most of our time there as the tyre came off the rim. So we dropped about three, three and a half minutes. So, yeah, I don't know if it was a good gamble or not. Special stage four in the Zanin area brought about a sudden change at the top of the leaderboard. A brief sojourn down the wrong route by Jan Havoc and Doug Judd saw the pair lose 43 seconds to Serge Damso and Guy Hodgson. For the Castrol Toyota crew, a nine second deficit had turned into a 32 second lead. After a succession of Class A7 wins, reigning champions Chart van der Vold and Cindy Harding were under a little pressure where the class standings were concerned. The Reeks towing VW Golf pair had dropped time to Tony Ball and Marty Oliveira in the Bulwark Park VW Golf and had yet to settle into any sort of rhythm. Van der Vold and Harding had also dropped time to Hergen Fecken and Dave Lukovic, who'd taken the early lead in Class A6. Behind them, Ball and Oliveira were going like a train in a reversal of a pattern this season that has seen the Kwazulu Natal crew mount some stirring late charges. Kali van Emmerver and Andre Vermeulen were also going well in the Toyota Conquest and were running second to Fekin and Lukovic in Class A6. The X-Factory Daewoo Lanos in the hands of Fernando Rueda and Jill Talton was working its way through the field. Rueda and Talton were on the fringes of the top ten, but little lapses like this were not helping their cause. Also a little hiccup for Wiley Harrington and Tilo van Festenhagen in an Essen Centre running in Class A7. In sweltering conditions, the Stanic Great North Rally was providing for plenty of action, and at the service point at the end of Stage 4, Damso was in philosophical mood. I think Habeck made a bit of a mistake there on that stage. So, you know, at this speed, anybody can make a mistake, so it looks like we're 52 seconds ahead now, so we'll just have to see if we can keep it there or open it a bit more. After their early trials and tribulations, Paolo Piazzamuzo and Richard Leake were forced to get a move on in the Sassel Motorcraft Ford Escort. They dropped out of the top ten and faced a tough haul over the rest of the event. A hiccup on stage four saw Hannes Klobler and Nick Hatton under pressure in the Group N category and in Class N3. But special stage five saw the end of the road for Jean-Pierre Damso and a couple of other fancied competitors. Damso broke a lower control arm. A6 leaders, Hergen Fecken and Dave Lukovic, had a flat tyre. And Tony Ball and Marty Olafir in Class A7 broke a side shaft. Team total Nissan Centropair, Cliff Blackburn and Johan Klaassen safely negotiated special stage five with their immediate target, Group N and Class N3 leaders, Hannes Krobler and Nick Hatton. Krobler, Blackman and the team total Toyota Corolla pair of Dean Saunders and Graham Hooper were now closely bunched in the fight for Group N honors, with Saunders and Hooper also leading Class N2. Behind them, a string of Class A6 cars had moved up the pecking order. At the front of the bunch were Skulk Berger and Martin Butter in the Toyota Corolla, with Craig Trott and Brian Duncan going along steadily, and a team total Toyota Conquest. Also going along without any real drama were Quazilla Natal pair, Chris Devitt and Alec Harris, who were having a good dice with the Trot Duncan car. And for those with long memories, a blast from the past with Johan and Felicity Prinz in the thick of the Class S20 battle in a Datsun Triple S that was sounding as crisp as it did a couple of decades ago.
Now, a Nissan of more recent vintage with Fissa Duplessis and Lisa Joubert out in the Mr. Mr. Nissan Sentra. They were losing ground to the front runners, Frobler and Blackburn in Class N3, but had not picked up any problems. Looking good at this stage at the front of Class S20 were Top Car publisher Doug Kemsley and Steve Krobolov in the Titan Top Car BMW. Class S20 does not count towards the Stanek Rally Championship, but Kemsley and Krobolov were creeping closer and closer to the top ten overall. About to become another special Stage 5 casualty were Class N1 frontrunners Alan Worms and Brendan Newnan in the team total Opel Corsa, going past the stricken Opel Cadet of Scott Berger Jr. and Greg Godrich. Worms and Newnan later lost the wheel on the stage, and this put championship leaders Rodney Fasaki and Caroline Simmer firmly in control of Class N1 in the team total Toyota Taz. Up at the service point, Class A6 leaders Hogan Fekin and Dave Lukovitz, once they'd heard of the demise of Jean-Pierre Damso, decided to withdraw their ailing Dunair Toyota Corolla. We were lying, we were going pretty well. We were lying third overall, just the head of uh, Etienne Lawrence. And then in this stage, eight k's into the stage, we got a flat. Um, and the flat took out our, our brakes at the front as well. We stopped, changed the wheel. And then uh, as we came out of the stage, the car started overheating and we can't find the problem. There's no the water is leaking somewhere. So I think that's our rally. Group N championship leaders Saunders and Hooper were also reassessing tactics. Well, we're just going to look at where we are at the end of tonight. And then if we're close, we're in with a chance, we're going to go for it. I mean, if we're not, we're just going to hang back because we can't afford to throw away the rally either with uh, the lead in the championship. We don't need to win the class to uh, win the championship. After a regroup in Zanin, it was back to work for Cruz with two night special stages, one of them on dirt and the other an all-tar spectator stage in the center of Zanin. Straight on, slide right into 90 left. Keep right into left. And then T right 100. The gravel stage provided VW Motorsport pair Jan Havoc and Douglas Judd with the opportunity of pulling back some time on rally leaders Serge Damso and Guy Hodgson. Being first on the road was a major advantage for Havoc and Judd, and with just a problem, Damso and Hodgson dropped 14 seconds to see their lead trimmed to 46 seconds. Behind the factory Castrol Toyota crew, the team total Toyota Conquest in the hands of Etienne Lawrence and Robert Paisley was in a safe third place. Lawrence and Paisley were around three minutes adrift of the leading pair, but were not under any kind of attack from behind. Paolo Piazzamuzo and Richard Leake were still working their way back towards the top ten in the Sassol Ford Escort. Piazzamuzo and Leake were 58 seconds slower through the stage than Havoc and Judd, an indication of the advantage the VW crew held by being first on the road. A wrong slot did Fernando Rueda and Jill Talton no good in the debut Lanos, and they dropped 70 seconds to slip down the leaderboard. The short Zanin town stage drew a huge and appreciative crowd, and with dust no problem here, Havoc and Judd and rally leaders Damso and Hodgson posted identical times. The demise of both the Barry Hobbler, Mike Burrows and Tony Ball, Marty Olafier combinations left Chart van der Waal and Cindy Harding firmly in control of Class A7 in the Reeks towing VW Golf. Hannes Hobbler and Nick Haddon were back in front in the Group N category and in Class N3, Kali van der Merwe and Henri Vermeulen now led Class A6 in the Toyota Conquest. Ben Championship leaders Dean Saunders and Graham Hooper had a tight grip on Class N2 and at the end of the day were eighth overall. At the overnight halt, Castrol Toyota crew Damso and Hodgson had a comfortable 46 second lead over Havoc and Judd. Lawrence and Paisley were a solid third and three Group N crews had worked their way into the top ten.